<laughs> All right, now in health news, new research shows a supplement made, uh, made from mushroom extract may help eliminate HPV infections. Dr. Philippa Cheatham is an attending physician of urology at Winthrop University Hospital and teaches at Stony Brook, you know, Stony Brook University, and she's here in our New York studio. It's good to see you. Thanks for having me, Tony. Thanks, thanks so much for coming in. We want to talk about three very important topics, and starting with this potential cure for cervical cancer, most of which is called, caused by the HPV uh, vaccine. First of all, tell us what the researchers have found out. Well, this is very exciting research. It's coming out of the University of Texas, and they're actually looking at this natural compound, which comes from the roots, the mycelium, we call them, of a shiitake mushroom. And the mushroom is grown in a rice bran extract. It's been around for many, many years, and actually it comes from Sapporo, Japan. Mm. And it's been used, I mean, the Japanese have been using mushrooms for medicinal purposes for thousands of years. But this new study looked at women with the HPV virus. And this virus is associated with developing cervical cancer. And most cervical cancers have HPV risk factors associated with, with them. So the great news about this study, it's a small study and more research is needed. But in this study, patients who took this ingredient called AHCC, mm -hmm. which stands for active hexose correlated compound, this mushroom extract, mm -hmm. if they took this by pill for six months, 50% of the women in the study had eradication of the HPV virus, which is phenomenal. Yeah, and, and acknowledging you did say this was a small study, so so much more to go. However, that's very encouraging. Is there any indication of how it acts, why it has this effect? Sure. Well, first thing we need to say, this is a clinical study. There's lots of research that's been done in basic science labs looking at cells, but this is in human beings. And the way that HPV causes cancer, HPV is a virus, and virus causes inflammation in cells, virus cells will result in proteins and abnormal proteins results in cancer development. And HPV, not only has it been associated with cervical cancer, but it's also been associated with penile cancer as well. This is so very, very exciting encouraging. research. Very in and the exciting only too. research actually, Debbie, that's showing eradication. Most women who have the virus, we monitor them until they may develop the disease. But this is actually prevention, which is obviously the best treatment. Gosh, in yeah. If this pans out between that and, and the vaccine, which is proving to be effective, we really could uh, put uh, cervical cancer on the rearview mirror. Let's quickly move on to the next sure. one, a study that came out. And this is really common sense, but it's been codified now with science. And that is <laughs> odd uh, work shifts then make your brain do, does do weird things. Tell us about this. Well, this is a study that looks at shift workers and looks at what happens to your brain, whether it's good or bad to work shifts. So this may not be something you want to tune into if you're a regular shift worker and you can't, if you're an air hostess or you're in a factory working the night shift. But this study shows that for people who are working shifts, and that is asleep, um, after midnight or having to get up regularly before five o'clock in the morning, mm -hmm. that your brain function deteriorates. If you're doing that for a decade, that can take six and a half years of brain function away from you. Oh my goodness. And, and on a daily basis, how does that manifest? Well, it can result in confusion. It can result in lack of concentration, irritability, all of these functions of like mental concentration span. We also know that if you 50 days in a single year, that can also have an effect on reduction of brain function by four and a half years. So it's not just for people who are doing it year after year after year. So. Oh, that's bad Makes news. me think about my medical training and all the shifts that we did. Oh, absolutely, in veterinary school as well. You're that's staying right. up for 24 or 36 hours, that that's kind right. of thing. So more to look into there. Let's get to the last one before we're all out of time. Uh, now there's been a study that shows that bariatric surgery, weight loss surgery, can prevent diabetes. Wow. Tell us more. This study is new, but it's not new data. Many studies have shown that independently, we know that if you have weight loss surgery, obviously that can help with weight loss, can also help with reduction in blood pressure, lower cholesterol. But in this study, they showed that independently, it reduces the risk of developing diabetes. And, and is, is it specific to particular, because there's a few different kinds of bariatric surgery, is it specific to any particular kind? Well, this study looked at three different types. They looked at the gastric band, what we know as the lap bands. They also looked at gastric bypass surgery. But we know that people who have significant obesity, it's associated with type 2 diabetes, 
which is associated with insulin resistance. So weight loss surgery can really help. Last seconds in the show, do you suspect that this will make weight loss surgery perhaps a mandate for, for those who are morbidly obese or make it more attractive as an option? I think so, and also it will help with reduction in taking all these diabetic medications as well as improving quality of life. Yeah, great information, Dr. Philippa Cheatham. Thank you so much. Thank you, Debbie. Good to see you. Well, that's gonna do it for us today. Thanks for joining us. Please do come again tomorrow for another edition of Arise America. I'm Debbie Turner-Bell. Have a great one. Bye-bye.